My name is Johnny Miller. I'm a photographer, a journalist, and I'm also the founder of African Drone. I'd like to show you how the use of drones, and also satellite imagery and sensor technology, is helping us analyze cities in a new way, and also a more affordable way. The SDG 11 says, with sound, risk-informed planning and management, cities can become incubators for innovation and growth and drivers of sustainable development. But how do we perform this planning and management? Patterns in the built environment, like transport links or invisible movements of services and data, these are all systems. And in order to plan for sustainable growth in our cities, we have to first understand these systems. Drones offer a democratizing, affordable, and empowering revolution to see our cities in new ways. In this presentation, I'm gonna show you a few examples of using drones, which has the power to bring about great change in various urban systems. First, we'll talk about how our African drone partners in Tanzania are using drones to map human settlements in Dar es Salaam. Second, I'll talk about how African drone is using drones here in Cape Town to map and enumerate informal settlements. And lastly, I'll discuss how I'm using drones in my own personal art project, Unequal Scenes, to help visualize the concept of wealth inequality. The collection and dissemination of spatial data through mapping is key in Africa. Accurate maps are important because they provide official records of demarcated property boundaries, which allows homeowners to legally claim ownership over their land. It also allows city planners to plan for services and service delivery, plan for disasters, and mitigate risk. Previously, aerial maps had to be created in a couple different ways. You could use satellite data, or you could fly airplanes over cities with cameras. Both are expensive and cumbersome. Drones, rather, provide higher resolution imagery than either one and at a cheaper cost. A real-world example of this is the rapidly expanding city of Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. Dar is the fastest growing city in Africa, with a population expected to almost double in the next 15 years. Large parts of the city are unplanned and without basic service provision, and many people moving into Dar construct basic shelters in one of the many floodplains in the city. This leads to a cycle every year of flooding and relocation, which causes injury and loss. But a project funded by the World Bank called Romani Huria is now being used to map and analyze the entire city using drones. This project is managed and operated by Tanzanian citizens. They collect data by flying drones over the city in a carefully planned pattern. The drones then take thousands of high resolution still photos taken over the course of hundreds of different flights. Once the drones return to base, the photographs are then uploaded and stitched together to create a large-scale map of the city. This process is called photogrammetry. One of the key features of photogrammetry is the ability to produce elevation maps in a 3D model, which allows researchers to model these floodplains. This means that city planners can immediately detect at-risk developments, they can plan for service delivery, and they can mitigate risk. Moreover, the local Romani Huria team members are learning valuable and transferable skills for the future. The data that's collected will be open and available to the public free of charge. And it's also important to note that the government of Tanzania, which is in charge of the airspace above DAR, has presciently seen the benefit of a drone-friendly environment and enabled this project to proceed. Another example of drone mapping is a project the African Drone has partnered with in the Western Cape province of South Africa. This project involves using drones and also ground surveying techniques to collect a variety of information on informal settlements near Cape Town. There's over 200,000 households categorized as informal in Cape Town. Enumerating these settlements, which means formally recognizing that they exist, is the first step in a very long process of legitimacy and making sure that this survey is done accurately is of the highest importance as matching the geographic location of each household to a specific GPS point is important in eventually assigning that household an address. Using drones is an innovative approach to performing this task, and South Africa is only beginning to use them in surveys. In fact, as far as we know, this is the first drone survey of its kind anywhere in South Africa. We first gained permission to fly drones over the selected informal settlements to create extremely accurate maps. This involved close coordination with the community, town hall style meetings, 
and approval from a variety of authorities. We then perform the actual flights, taking hundreds of photos of each location and using ground control points in order to create an extremely accurate geo-referenced image. This geo-referenced image is essentially a highly detailed aerial map. Next, we provided these aerial maps to a ground-based surveying team. Each team entered the informal settlements on foot with the GPS tracker so that they could correlate their position on the ground to the image on the aerial map. Eventually, with the use of special GIS software, it'll be possible for someone to click on the aerial map and retrieve all the information about each household. This entire process, we hope, will greatly speed the management of data and lower the cost from what it was previously. Unequal Scenes is my photo project that I began in 2016. The problem I was concerned with is inequality. In the case of South Africa, the intersection of income, wealth, and race all combine in what's recently been declared the most unequal country on earth. Inequality has also been dubbed the defining challenge of our time, and it stands in direct contrast to the stated SDG goal of creating sustainable cities. There have been some studies suggesting that inequality is bad for everything from health outcomes, safety and security, and even the economic growth of a country. High levels of inequality even threaten the very social compact between citizenry and the state on which our societies rely upon to function. The challenge that I found was that representing inequality in a photographic way, in one image, was very difficult to do from the ground. In Cape Town, where I live, there are high walls, trees, barriers, buildings, which make it very difficult to show inequality. It's very easy to show poverty, and it's very easy to show affluence, but to combine them together into one image was quite difficult. I actually had my aha moment when a video I took of Table Mountain with a drone made a friend of mine exclaim, wow, I've never seen the mountain look like that before. And that was the moment that I realized that drones don't even have the powerful ability to change and transform our perspective on the subject of our photographs. They actually have the ability to change how we think in general. Soon afterwards, I went to an area I knew to be highly unequal and was confronted with these same walls. It was impossible to tell the extent of anything from the ground. But once the drone lifted off, the full extent of the inequality came into view. A view that I had been expecting, but still hit me as an extremely powerful image and one that I hadn't seen before. I went home that night and I put the image onto my Facebook page, a page which had almost no likes or followers and no expectation of that photo going anywhere. Overnight, the image began to go viral. And when I woke up in the morning, there was a firestorm of comments from all over the world and all over South Africa. It became very apparent to me that I was right, that this drone photo, this particular technology of using the drone, allowed people to see things in a new way. This technology was cheap enough and it was portable enough that I was able to quickly continue the series in multiple towns around South Africa and even the world. In the context of Cape Town, city planning was radically divided during apartheid, but there are wealth inequalities that have formed in cities without apartheid. I've taken photos in Nairobi, Mumbai, Mexico City, many other cities. Each one is very different from one another, but from the air and from the drone, the images look eerily similar. It's a global phenomenon and a global problem, and it becomes that much more apparent when looking at it from above. It also helps us move past these preconceived notions that we may have of what a city is supposed to be and what we're supposed to believe about economies or urban planning, and allows us to see the reality of what these things look like on the ground. Other activist networks have begun to use drones, drone footage, satellite imagery, and social media, to provide evidence in cases of conflict or social unrest. For example, the London-based organization Forensic Architecture has reconstructed events using found footage, satellite imagery, drone imagery, and the like, to challenge the official narrative put forward as truth. African drone partner African Defense Review does similar work in Africa using drones and satellite imagery to reconstruct events in conflict zones. And that leads me to a point which is so important, which I want to end on, which is the case for deregulation. Because there exists a movement in various countries worldwide, and especially in Africa, to restrict drone use or to outright ban it. Sometimes this is through cumbersome licensing schemes, Sometimes it's by making it extremely and prohibitively expensive to gain a license, and sometimes it's just to ban it outright. Oftentimes, these restrictions can be got around through outright corruption, which compounds the problem. This should be pushed back upon forcefully by civil society. 
as the use of drones, I believe, is one of the truly revolutionary technologies of the 21st century. The act of image making of the world, of mapping the world yourself, is vital in creating the information necessary to plan and to manage our cities sustainably in the future. When you look at it this way, drone flying is truly a revolution. Thanks for watching.